Jesus who died, now glorified, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's a wonderful joy to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. All hail King Jesus, all hail Emmanuel. King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the bright morning star. And throughout eternity, I will sing your praises. How privileged we are to praise him, adore him and magnify him and glorify him. We should be thankful to the Lord who has loved us with an everlasting love. And he has given us the wonderful privilege of coming to his presence at any time under any circumstances. Because Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Lord Jesus Christ is with us. He has loved us. He has given himself for us. And he has provided everything to us. And he has blessed his people in a wonderful, wonderful way. And his presence is always with us. He will never ever leave us. Father and mother may forsake. But I will never ever leave you. That's his promise. What a wonderful God we have. How much we should praise him. How much we should worship him. How much we should adore him and magnify him. And uh, how much we should, uh, we should spend time in his presence. Meditate on him. Who is my Lord Jesus Christ? What he has done for me. How much he has loved, for, uh, loved me. And uh, how much he has blessed me. Nothing is lacking because of the Lord Jesus Christ who is with me in all the days of my life. What a wonderful privilege. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1. We will read a few verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23, uh, 24 and 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greek foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God... Uh, God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. May God richly bless these three words, three verses. Paul here says, while writing to the Corinthians, he says, We preach Christ crucified. What is the message? The greatest message. Hmm? That is the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ is God himself. That's what the Bible says. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. And he became man for us. He became man. And he walked on the dusty roads of Calvary. In his life, he has helped everyone who came to him. He has healed the sick. He fed the people. And he was always concerned with the people. That's why he became man. He underwent the uh, difficulties of this human life. And... Finally, he died for us on the cross of Calvary, the cruel cross. He shed his precious blood. We cannot but talk about this matter again and again. Because he bore all our sins on his shoulders. And he took the penalty of our sins on himself. And he shed his precious blood from top to bottom, from head to knee. And 
He died for us on the cross of Calvary. What did he do when he was hanging on the cross of Calvary? He prayed to God, Father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. What a wonderful saviour. He prayed for the wicked people. How much we should be, we should be thankful to God. Father forgive them. And the Father in heaven, he accepted that prayer. And he forgave us because of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. He sacrificed himself as a living sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And he died for our sins. He was buried. But praise the Lord. He rose again on the third day. Because death cannot hold him in the grave. Because he is God himself. And he ascended into, the, into heaven. And now he is at the right hand of the majesty. He is praying for us with, to the Father by which we have the privilege of coming into the holy presence of God. What a wonderful thing it is. He has given us His holy word. Heaven and earth shall pass away but this word will not pass away. I always repeat like this. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 onwards, we read like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. Who is God? The living Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. This is the eternal Word. The entire, entire volumes of uh, many liter literary things, many books, that will be destroyed. But only one book which cannot be destroyed that is the Bible. That is the Word of God. Because Word of God is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. So how much privileged we are as we spend time with His Holy Word. We are encouraged. We are strengthened. We are comforted. Yeah? We are healed. And we will be stronger and stronger so that we can face anything that comes in the life. And we will be victorious in all the things that comes again, come against us. Look at that. So what should be the message that we should say? Paul says here, but we preach Christ crucified. That is the main thing. The Lord Jesus Christ is crucified. What happened? When Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, he crushed the head of the devil once for all. And in the name of Jesus we have victory. What a wonderful thing it is. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, he has crushed the head of the devil. And we have victory. We are more than conquerors. That's what the Bible says. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that. That's why we preach Christ crucified. Paul says. It is a crucifixion. The message of the cross. Is for the Jews. It's a stumbling block. Jews did not believe. It's a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks, it is foolishness. But unto them which are called, look at them, listen to me very carefully. The Bible says in verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, number one. What a wonderful thing. If you know that you are, you have believed. If you know that you are born again. 
the message of the cross is message of the cross is the power of God. Do you rejoice in the message of the cross? It is the power of God. The power exhibited on the cross of Calvary. Look at that. Hmm. And not only that, it is the wisdom of God. For the heathen, for the worldly people, the cross was a curse. But, the, but for the children of God, washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Power of God. It is the power of God. The cross where Jesus died for us. Where Jesus shed his precious blood. It is the, it is the power of God. Devil cannot stand because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will flee away. He cannot stand. Number one. And number two. It is the wisdom of God. What a wonderful thing is. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Heavens opened. What a wonderful thing. Is that we can see the heavenly glory. We can see the wonderful glory. Oh God. It, it enlightens our mind. Enlightens our heart. So that we can have the glimpse of the heavenly glory. It is the great wisdom. How much we should praise him. Hmm? That's why Paul says, huh? I preach Christ crucified. Look at that. I have no other message except the message that Christ is crucified. He rose again on the third day. He is the victor, victorious God. He crushed the head of the devil on the cross of Calvary. He rose again from the dead, conquering death. Devil and the death was destroyed by the crucifixion, by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the wisdom, wisdom of God was revealed to us. Mm. See, look at that. Many people think that uh, Jesus become weak. Mm. What the Bible says, because the foolishness of God, many people think it is a foolishness. Cross is foolishness. Because the foolishness of God is wiser, wiser than men. That's what the Bible says. And the weakness of God. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, uh, Christ was weak. He became weak. The weakness of God is stronger than men. What a wonderful thing. I think, see, the cross of Calvary teaches us many things. Yeah. The cross of Calvary teaches us many things. The, oh, for example, the cross of Calvary exhibits the tragedy of sin. Man is a sinner by birth. And man is a sinner by his deeds. And the wages of sin is death. And the Bible says all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. That is eternal fire. But praise God. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who stood between God and man. And bore our, uh, bore our punishment on himself. Shed his holy blood, precious blood, on the cross of Calvary. And by his blood, he has cleansed the sins of man who comes to him. How, 
How do we get salvation? Jesus said, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye heavy laden and burden. I will give you rest. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ on the foot of the cross and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, I confess that I am a sinner and I am worthy to be punished in hellfire. Lord, have mercy upon me. When you cry with, the, with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you, your sins will be forgiven. You will be free from the, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the punishment for the sin. And you are born again. The Spirit of God dwells in you. The moment you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. He will make His abode in your heart, in your life. And He will enlighten your heart by the Word of God. What a wonderful thing it is. Yeah. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, I will tell you, you are the most wisest person on the face of this earth. Because God has revealed the eternity, the wonderful things He has told for you. Jesus said, I am going to my Father. Why I am going to my Father? To prepare a mansion for you, not a house. The Bible says mansion. How it can be? Just imagine. A mansion for you. Hmm? You will be with me always. Wherever I go, you are with me. Look at that. What a wonderful privilege to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at his disciples, twelve disciples. Hmm? Except one, the Judas Iscariot. He was with the Lord Jesus Christ. He walked with him. He was, he ministered with him. But what happened? Even though he was walking with him, even though he was uh, uh, talking with him, even though he had seen many things, miracles after miracles, and the great things of the Lord Jesus Christ, but even though he had the wonderful privilege of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, He, he rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. It is possible we may call ourselves as Christians following the Lord Jesus Christ. From our mouth we confess, but in the heart, the devil has taken that heart for himself. Like Judas is carried out. And what happened to him, you know? He went away and hanged himself. What a tragedy it is. What a tragedy it is. My dear friends, let us examine ourselves. Okay, you say that you are born again. Good. But examine your heart. Bible says the heart is deceitful among all things, desperately deceitful. So let us be careful whether I am really born again. If you are born again, number one, you will be joyful and you will have the total devotion for his word. Because his word has life. 
His word is so wonderful. It has life. It gives life. Jesus said, What is my food? <laughs> my food, my meat, is to do the will of God. The greatest food uh, that we have, which gives a wonderful strength, wonderful joy, wonderful privilege, that is none other than the Holy Word of God. So we should be, yeah, we should be the, um, the doers of the Word of God. We should spend time in the presence of the Lord. As you spend time uh, with the Word of God, the holy presence of God will cover you. And you will be joyful. You will not feel like uh, closing the Bible and taking rest. Because the Bible is such a wonderful word. There is no other word except the Bible which gives us complete satisfaction, complete joy. The peace that passeth all understanding will dwell in our hearts. What a wonderful thing. Look at that. Hmm. Paul says here, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God. The wonderful power proceeds out of the children of God washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I am not talking about religion. Religion has no power. Religion will not take us to heaven. Religion will not never give us any religion. It will never give us the satisfaction of the heart. Religion will not deliver us or the, uh, or, or, or the religious activities will not help us at all. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the word of God. It helps us completely. How much we should praise God for us. For this. Hmm? Jesus said heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. Because it is eternal. It is God. This word is God himself. That's why we have read, we have seen in John's Gospel, chapter 1. So, so it is the, it's the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we read the Bible, as we read the Bible, the Lord Jesus talks to us. And our duty is to hear, listen to his words. And walk according to his standard. Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. The disciples, when Jesus called them one by one, they followed him. Left everything and followed him. In following the Lord Jesus Christ, we should leave everything. We should not carry anything. We should not carry the religion with us. The religion is a stumbling block for our journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. We should not carry uh, our, our standard, our, our uh, the lifestyle. Because that is a hindrance. How can we follow him? We could, we could only follow him with sincere faith and utter dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is absolutely necessary. Forget 
everything and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our captain. He is our leader. He is our God. And uh, had, uh, we should practice in walking in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has made a mark by his footsteps that we should walk, put our foot on the, on the mark of the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how it is. We should take the word of God verbatim as it is. Don't add anything. Don't delete anything. There is a warning in the Bible. If you add anything, hmm, God will add all the plagues of the word of God in your life. If you delete a, a, anything, whatever God has promised, you will not get it. He will delete your citizenship in heaven. That's why we should, we, should, uh, uh, we should follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord should be in, front, in the front. You should be at his back. That's how it is, Christian life. That is how it is, the, the, the life in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are commanded to follow him. Jesus said, follow me. And we need to follow him. Verbatim. Mark the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where do we find the footsteps? In the Holy Bible. Look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read Gospels. So, look at the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him in, the, in his footsteps. That will lead you to the correct destination. If you go here and there, yeah, then you will miss the track. We have, the devil has confused us in this world because he has raised up so many churches, uh, different, different, different types, liturgical churches and uh, you know, Pentecostal churches talking in tongues and so many others. That will, that will confuse the whole uh, uh, the, uh, mind of the people. But the real pattern is given in this word. I will repeat again. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Do you remember that verse? I told several times. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Fourfold pattern of the New Testament church. Look at that. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 and they continued look at listen to me very carefully and they continued steadfastly look at that steadfastly that means without uh, you know without taking your mind from that you should be steadfastly continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine that is number one the first pillar that is the word of God. We should continue oh, steadfastly on the word of God. That is number one. And number two. And fellowship. What is the meaning of fellowship? Sharing with each other. Early disciples, they were sharing with each other. We should share our good things the divine uh, things with others. That is the fellowship. We should have love for the uh, uh, love for the brothers and sisters. 
and we should share our good things to to them sharing with each other that is the second one second pillar and number 3 and in breaking of bread oh this is so important they continued steadfastly in the breaking of bread on the first day of the week when they gathered they continued steadfastly in these things what is the meaning of breaking of bread when jesus died on the cross of calvary the curtain which covered the most holy place was torn from top to bottom so now all can see the most holy place jesus died for us so that we can enter into the most holy place and worship him look at that because jesus died on the cross of calvary yeah, the curtain which was covering the most holy place was torn from top to bottom and the most holy place was visible now uh, the people can ordinary people can enter into that most holy place having been washed by the blood of jesus christ what a privilege it is what a privilege it is see what we will do when we break the bread in remembrance of the of our savior the lord jesus christ who loved us to such an extent to break his body on the cross of calvary hmm? we will have the privilege of entering into the host holy of holies and worship there where can we worship only in the most holy place in the presence of god just uh, you know just uh, think about it when we come to the church do we really feel that we are entering into the most holy place that's why in order to give us the privilege of entering into the most holy place the lord jesus christ he broke his body this is absolutely necessary without this we cannot worship god see what is the meaning of worship huh prayer no lord give me that give me this no it's not the worship worship means giving what can we give the praises of our holy heart we will be able to huh, proclaim and say the my lord jesus christ loved me to such an extent of giving himself for me on the cross of calvary he shed his blood and by his blood i am cleansed i have become made holy and through his blood i can enter into the most holy place the very presence of god that is the feeling when you come to the church when you break the bread when you uh, enter into the most holy place and say lord thank you say that lord i worship you i adore you i magnify you because you have loved me with an everlasting love you are the king of kings and the lord of lords you are the eternal god and he have made provision by your death and resurrection that i will i can live i will live with you for eternity to eternity say to the lord and say thank you lord that is the real worship praising god is the real worship see the two things i want to mention you number one we should praise god for what god, he is what god is what the lord jesus christ is who he is he is the god of heaven he is the creator of the whole universe hmm? 
he has uh, he is a, a shepherd of uh, all the, the sheep and he is the that means he is the shepherd of my soul and he provides everything to me and i am living only because of my savior the lord jesus christ who loved me and gave himself for me that is the real worship thank him we should worship god for what he is number 1 and number 2 we should worship god for what he has done this is the real worship no other no other thing is worship there is no rules there is uh, no written thing the bible is the uh, uh, proof for that it is written in the bible that they worship god that means what is the what what did they uh, do they remembered who is my god and they thanked him for that that is number one and they remember the apostles the early disciples they remembered what god has done that's why they said lord i praise you i thank you i worship you this is the true worship whatever you do you may be having some pattern you must have, that is formed by you formed by men that is not the half pattern of worship bible gives us the clear picture of the pattern of the new testament church and then the fourth one they continued in prayers they spent time in the presence of the lord poured out their heart in the presence of the lord Huh? You even pour out our heart early morning when you get up. Get up early morning. Make it as a habit to get up early morning, and with a clear heart. You should not be worrying, worrying about your breakfast. You should not be worrying about your children. You should not be worrying about other things, worldly things. Get up early morning. and spend some solid time in the presence of the lord thanking him worshiping him adoring him magnifying him and that is the real worship and the lord god is very much pleased with your worship and he will see the difference then that day when you uh, early morning before you do anything before your breakfast you seek the presence of the lord and uh, eat the manna of god that he is giving to you and say lord thank you for what you are and what you had done for me spend some time in the early hours of the day look at my lord jesus christ his life early in the morning he left his disciples and went to the mountain place late in the night he was alone with his father in heaven if god requires this one the lord jesus christ is god himself if it is required for him if it was necessary for him what about unworthy people like us how much more we require the presence of the lord how much more we require the time to spend here eh, with the, with his holy word I told you this word is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. When you read this word, the Lord Jesus speaks to you. Hmm. 
How do you understand? Your spirit. Your spirit will understand. You will understand. It is Lord speaking to me. See, there is a song in Canada. It says, "Nanna hudu ko, atna hudu dey ko, prema da bandha vide." It's a loving relationship with with my heart and the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. A loving relationship. Read song of Solomon. You will understand. the closeness of the lord with his people i tell you one thing more than you the lord jesus christ who has saved you from the clutches of the devil from the eternal fire he desired to spend time with you do you want to make him wait what is the best time early in the morning and late at night see that's why see if you spend solid time with the lord jesus christ your face will shine like anything do you know moses he went to the mountain he was there with god for 40 days and 40 nights when he was coming back the people could not see his face because it was shining like it was shining his face was shining because of the glory of god he spent time in the presence of the lord people could not see him because of the wonderful glory moses said hmm. what do we read in the uh, in the bible they that gaze upon him shall be brightened your face will show that you have spent time in the presence of the lord and your face will you know it will shine like glory do you really want to spend time in the presence of the lord forget your anything your cooking forget everything spend solid time in the presence of the lord there is a english chorus goes like this i want to be like the lord do you have that desire i want to be like the lord jesus christ how can you be like the lord jesus christ only if you spend time and time again in the presence of the lord jesus christ you will see the difference people will notice me notice there is something something they may not understand what it is but they will see the glory in your face what a wonderful thing it is how much we should love the lord see again john chapter 3 verse 20 16 god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son i cannot comprehend even today what is the full meaning of the little word so yes so god so loved the world i can show in action only so loved the world what is that meaning we cannot comprehend the meaning 
But one thing, one scene gives us the little glimpse of that meaning. And Jesus was hanging on the cross of Calvary. His two hands were stretched to the maximum, maximum and nailed to the cross. That is the word so. How much we should be thankful to the Lord. Hmm? If God can spend, if the Lord Jesus can spend that that much of uh, that much of uh, things, that much of uh, he went through the agony of his soul. That's what the Bible says. Because he loved you, his hands were stretched to the maximum extent. Maximum extent and nailed to the cross. That is the word. We cannot comprehend the word so, the little word. Two letters, yes, so. That much he has loved. That much he has loved. And understand this. The Lord Jesus Christ is the very handsome person. If you read Song of Solomon, you will see that verse. He is altogether lovely. He is the most beautiful person. He is altogether lovely. What happened when the cross of Calvary? Look it. Open up your spiritual eye and see the blood from top to bottom. Blood was oozing out from his head. Blood was oozing out from his hands. Blood was oozing out from his body. Blood was oozing out from his legs. Bleeding from top to bottom. You know how much the sin is ugly. If you have, if you see the cross of Calvary, the handsome person, altogether lovely man, the Lord Jesus Christ, he became ugly for you and me. He took my penalty on himself. And he, he took my sins on himself. He took my judgment on himself so that I can be free and became ugly on the cross of Calvary because of my and your sins. The altogether lovely man became ugly for me and you. How much he has loved you? What, what can we say to this? I have no words to say. I can only say. When I understood this fact, I only said like this, Lord, I don't know how to thank you. I can only say, I thank you with all my heart and I will serve you till the last breath of my life. What can I give to him? Hmm. All that he has done for me. And in my trouble he was there. In my sickness he healed me. In my loneliness he, he started talking to me. And in my tiredness, he infused strength to me. He took care of me in every circumstance. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. The question came to me when the Lord Jesus, the God himself, loved me to such an extent 
he could have he could have he could have forgiven me from heaven he did not do that he took the form of a man a human being from birth to the death he was so wonderful how we know he was born in a manger who is lord jesus christ he is the king of kings and the lord of lords the creator of the whole universe and the bible says when he was born there was no place in the inn that little huh, shed place there was no place he had to be born in a manger when he uh, when he was growing up he grew up as a carpenter boy look at that the creator of the whole universe how he humbled himself he was going huh, as a carpenter man and he said my meat is my food is to do the will of my father in heaven what was his food he said my food is to do the will of the, my father in heaven while dying oh such a great god who became man for us he was da dying like a criminal bleeding from top to bottom his bo body was marred beyond recognition how much we should praise him who can do this for us no one else no one else that's why our life should be focused on the lord jesus christ we get angry we talk when something goes wrong tit for tat so many things but look at the lord jesus christ he did not scold the people who were scolding him what a wonderful savior the question comes to us what can i do for this wonderful loving savior when you really understand the agony and pain the sorrow and the burden he carried we cannot comprehend how he went through that he went through all that and he rose victoriously he finished he said in the cross of calvary it is finished what is finished the salvation to mankind is finished he has prepared everything only thing now you have nothing to prepare He, he he has prepared everything only thing you accept him as your personal savior and lord lord i thank you for your life and sacrifice i thank you for the salvation that you have prepared for me lord jesus i confess that i am a sinner by birth sinner by deeds and i know that wages of sin is death that is hell fire with all my heart lord i come to you for redemption break me mold me and shape me for your glory you are my savior you are my lord that's all you have to do and the wonderful joy the glorious joy will enter into your heart 
and you will feel a light because the burden of sin has rolled away and you will start rejoicing in the Lord Jesus Christ alone that is a very blessed experience way back in 1963 I had this experience I was such young man of 16 years old one night I was sleeping as I could not get sleep at all I was struggling to sleep but I could not sleep I tried my level best even to the midnight I could not sleep I was wondering what is happening and one question came to my mind if you die tonight where will you go that has made me terrible terribly I am afraid I was afraid and I did not know what to do I was such a young man I prayed one simple prayer Lord Jesus have mercy upon me a sinner that is the one sentence prayer I made I did not know how to pray also and God answered my prayer that night I started rejoicing all these years all these years more than 60 years God is very good to me I remember and Peter said where shall we go you have the words of the living God where shall we go only you have only the Lord Jesus Christ has the words of the living God that will give life and life eternal my dear friends if you don't have this kind of experience in your life you come tonight to the presence of the Lord and surrender your life Lord Jesus he, he need not make a big prayer Lord Jesus I know that I am a sinner and my destiny is hellfire Lord I understand that you are my savior only you can save me save me Lord thank you that's a simple prayer you can do and you will see the difference may God richly bless you let us pray gracious and loving heavenly father I thank and praise you for the time that you have given to us Lord Jesus so that we can uh, we can see our wonderful Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who he is he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he is the creator of the whole universe and what he has done he gave his life for us on the cross of Calvary whereby we have the access to come to the God we have the access of salvation we, can, we have the uh, experience of salvation so that we can rejoice and be guaranteed that we will be with you for eternity to eternity. Thank you Lord for hearing our prayer. We worship you, adore and magnify you, give you all the glory, honor and praise in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.